this is Mr. Martin. This is uh, video two for section 9.5. We're talking about parametric equations and uh, the last video we left off uh, where you were going to work out these two examples. Um, so sometimes it's a little tricky figuring out um, you know your t-min and your t-max so you know you may want to make a table even though you're using your calculator you may want to just look at a table of values. You could actually use the table on your calculator also to try and help you. So for this first one, here's the settings that I used on the calculator. So you can check those out and if you want to pause the video and try and uh, duplicate this so that you get this. Again, notice the little arrowheads on the curve to um, show the orientation. And then for part B, um, kind of an interesting graph which would be really difficult to graph if we were doing um, rectangular equations we would have to uh, graph it in two parts um, but if we use a t min of minus 4 and a t max of 4 again our t step is 0 0.06 you can experiment with that if you want to and then here's my values for uh, x min and x max uh, and y min and y max so there's those again pause as needed so let's take a look at uh, another type of example this is eliminating a parameter so what we want to do is we want to convert this back to a rectangular equation and when we do that we'll be able to tell what this parametric equation represents. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to solve our y equals equation for t. Okay, so uh, I'm going to cross multiply here so I get y times t plus 1 is equal to 1 and then I'm going to distribute so I get yt plus y is equal to 1 and I'm gonna, I've got uh, yt is equal to 1 minus y and that's going to give me that t is equal to 1 minus y over y. All right, so that's step one over here. Okay, step two, I'm going to substitute t into x equals. All right, so I get x is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus y over y and I'm going to make that 1 y over y so I have a common denominator so that's going to give me 1 over the square root of so I have 1 minus y plus y so that's 1 over y and then I'm going to square both sides to get rid of that square root so I get x squared is equal to 1 over 1 over y which means if I do a little rearranging here I get y is equal to x squared okay so the parametric equations that I have up there represents a parabola alright so it's a little bit more complicated obviously but again we're going to get some information from it that we wouldn't normally get um, about its position over time alright so uh, go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try uh, when you come back um, the solution will be worked out for you again follow your two steps solve um, one of the equations for t and then go ahead and substitute it back in. Alright, so pause the video now. So here's the solution to uh, our example problem here. Here's our final answer. You should have y equals 2 over x to the fourth. So again, we're going to solve this equation for t. So we get t is equal to the square root of y over 2. And then we'll substitute that in for this. So once we substitute that in for t, we're going to get 1 over the square root of the square root, which is the fourth root. And then again, we'll raise each side to the fourth to get rid of our root. 
and we get x to the fourth is 2 over y after simplifying this uh, complex fraction and solving again for y and we get y equals 2 over x to the fourth. All right? Again, as always, if you have questions, make sure that you ask. Moving on to example 4, sketch the curve represented by this set of uh, parametric equations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rearrange these a little bit. I'm going to solve this for cosine so that I get cosine theta is equal to x over 2. And I'm going to rearrange this one so that I get sine theta is equal to y over 2. And we'll get back to those in a minute. So if I look at an x, um, a theta xy graph, because we don't have t in this case, so theta x and y. And we can see we're graphing it from uh, 0 to 2 pi. And I'm just going to pick my uh, quadrant angles for this, because it'll make it easy. So I have 0. I have pi over 2, I have pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All right, so when I plug a 0 in for theta, I have 2 times 1, which is 2. When I plug in 0 for sine, I'm going to get 2 times 0, which is 0. Plug in pi over 2, now I'm going to get 0, 2. Plug in pi, I'm going to get negative 2, 0. Again, if you have any questions about these, I'm just substituting in my quadrant angles for the cosine and sine and multiplying by 2. 0, negative 2, and for 2 pi, I have 2, 0 again. So let's take a look at this sketch. All right, so I have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and same thing down here. So 2, 0, 0, 2 negative 2, 0, 0, negative 2, and then I'm back here. So my graph is going to look like this. Again, let's draw in our arrowheads to show the orientation. So we see we're going around like this. So this is a, a clever way to graph a circle. If we wanted to graph a circle in rectangular coordinates, we would have to graph two separate equations, one for the top half of the circle and one for the bottom half of the circle. So let's go ahead and let's use what I had done here and let's verify that this is actually the equation of a circle with a radius of 2. And I'm going to use one of my identities. I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity. And I know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. And I know that cosine theta is x over 2, so this is going to be x over 2 squared. And sine of theta is y over 2, so this is going to be y over 2 squared is equal to 1. So simplify, I'm going to get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. If I multiply through by 4, I get x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Okay. And this is a circle. It has a center of 0, 0. And it's got a radius of the square root of 4, which is 2. That's r squared. OK, so just a clever way to use parametrics to graph a circle. Let's look at another example here we're going to find the parametric equation for a given equation. So this is a pretty straightforward process. And we're actually going to find two different parametric equations for this. And you'll notice for part A, really, we're just going to let x equal t. That's going to be our substitution. And then for part B, I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. I'm going to let 2 minus x equal t. So if I gave you a problem on a quiz or a test, it said find two different representations. Really, the first one that you're going to want to always do is t is equal to x. And then you could just make up your own other substitution here. OK, so I'm going to let uh, t is equal to x. So for my parametric equations, my first equation, x is going to be t. And then for my second equation, y is going to equal, so since I know x is t, it's just going to be 4t minus 
3. And that's it. Okay, so over here it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So for x, I'm going to have to solve this equation for x. So I'm going to move my x over to this side, and I'm going to move my t over to this side, so I get x is equal to 2 minus t. And then for y, again, we'll have to do a little bit of work here. I'm going to have to do 4 times 2 minus t, because that's what x was, minus 3. And I get uh, 8 minus 4t minus 3. So then I get y is equal to negative 4t plus 5. So this is just another representation of my rectangular equation as parametric equations. All right, so if you have any questions, um, let me know, and uh, we'll see you next time.